Hey, what's up, guys? It's Wes. So it's October, and like clockwork, Corel is doing another humble bundle for thirty dollars. You get a whole bunch of stuff. You get Corel Painter 2023 in its entirety. You get brush packs. You get some of their like like after shot. I don't have the window up, but you get a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, Paint Shop Pro. Uh, yeah, a lot of things goes to charity. A fantastic cause. I'm gonna have a link to the deal in the description. But that brings us to this video. So in the past, I've been a little critical of Corel and said it's not worth the money and why does this exist whenever there's other stuff that's cheaper and more affordable and easier to use and blah, blah, blah. But to be fair, last year uh, during the Humble Bundle, I got Corel Painter 2022 and I started changing my tune a little bit. Um, yeah, th there's going to be a link to that video um, in the description as well. Uh, both of the Corel videos, actually. Um, so 2023 is here. There's a lot of promises, better stability, better performance, a better kind of multi-threading for CPUs and graphic processor units and all that stuff. So they have that, but also I think the big thing that people are talking about is the Fluid Brush Engine. So what is that? Um, is it kind of worth the hype? Is Corel still going on its way on um, listening to the community and improving? Or are they kind of reverting back to some things that kind of made them, in my opinion, kind of a bubble, kind of an island. They're over there. Everyone else is doing their own thing. What side of the coin, uh, in my opinion, is Corel Painter 2023? And, you know, 30 bucks, that's definitely worth it to spend for me. So let's dig into it. Let's talk about Corel Painter 2023 and if it's going to be right for you. <laughs> All right, normally we hop just straight into the time lapse. However, I wanted to show a little something real quick. So let's get into Corel Painter 2023. We got it right here. We're going to open this up. Um, and whenever you first open it up, you're going to see that you have kind of your splash screen, make your own document, things like that. However, there's this nice little performance deal right here, which I just recommend you do. Um, it's going to just go and be basically a diagnostics tool that shows you how your experience is going to be with Corel Painter. Now, it is kind of a beast whenever it starts getting into really mixing different layer modes and things like that. I don't use a ton of the really hardcore stuff, but just know that the more kind of math you introduce by stacking layers and wet paint onto thick fluid paint and palette knives and all that stuff, it can start to run a little crazy. So uh, whenever you get in here, if you go to performance, then rerun report, it's going to run a little diagnostics tool. You're just going to see it here. Uh, you can probably hear my computer fan like kick up. It, it really does. It, it puts it through. You know what I mean? But the nice thing is what I believe this also does as far as performance is it sees how your computer is configured and it does its best to put settings in place to give you a better experience. Now see, that time it ran better. So each time I've run this, it's had different results, which is weird. But, you know, uh, it's been right around the 12,000-ish uh, each time, which is cool. But yeah, I just wanted to show that. Also, um, you know, your document window right here. You have your papers you can uh, set up, your canvas colors, things like that. Um, I already have mine set up at 2500 by 3500. We're going to be doing a portrait, kind of a medieval portrait based on a photo. But I'm going to try to make it painterly and not stick too hardcore to try to make the likeness right and stuff. I just want to get the overall idea. Uh, this will be for the time lapse. But then, uh, yeah, hit OK. Make the new deal. Um, I do realize that it's snappier. That 2023 so far has been snappier. Even... Uh, more so than 2022, which is exciting. That's that's fun. I like good responsive programs, and it seems like Corel has really been working hard behind the scenes to make this run a little bit better, a little snappier. You know, windows come up better, brushes lay down paint a little faster. Um, overall, good stuff. But so yeah, we have our colors, our mixer window. I do think Corel has one of the better paint mixers built in. Very very cool. Um, and the other thing we're going to do, um, I'm going to get the brush selector 
You can either have the bar to where it's up here and just kind of mount it right here. But I like to make everything kind of feel like Photoshop. I've used Photoshop for so long that I just, I'm going to come in here, go to brush selector, and I'm going to go to panel full view. And this is, this is where it's at for me. Um, I just like everything kind of right here. We have our art in the middle. We have our layers and our color picker on the right. Uh, brushes on the left. And toolbar on the left. And yeah, we're ready to rock and roll. So I just wanted to show that quick performance guide thing. I think it's really valuable. It's really useful. It helps kind of do proper diagnostics with your computer, see how your rig is going to handle it. And overall, just set you up for a better painting experience. But let's get to the time lapse. Let's talk about Corel Painter. Uh, yeah, and let's have some fun. And time lapse time. All right, here we go. <laughs> so now we're actually going to start using the program. Uh, yeah, I mean, to get kind of the elephant out of the, you know, talk about the elephant in the room, uh, whatever that saying is. I do have multiple videos about Corel Painter that range anywhere from like cautiously optimistic to some parts are downright cynical. And I want to try to avoid that this time. So if you want to look at, oh, okay, I'll, I'll put it out there. If you think Corel Painter is too much money normally, there's a video out there for you. Um, I'll have it linked in the description because <laughs> um, part of me agrees with you. But I don't know what it is. I don't know if, you know, getting older, I'm getting a little more live and let live. But I think it's less of a big deal now. Um, I, I'm not, I promise I'm not going to talk about price this whole time. Um, for $30, this is an absolute steal. You should get it. Every year, Corel does this. I highly recommend picking it up at the $30 price point. I think for that, it is deal of the century. You cannot find a better digital art product for $30 to get paintings on a canvas um, than Corel Painter at 30 bucks. It's there's it's not even close. Um for $400, it's different. But this is still very good. So, Corel Painter 2023 especially, they have promised better performance. They promised the fluid brushes kind of being a game changer. Now, you'll notice in this time lapse that I uh I don't use a lot of the fluid brushes. I use some of them. But really, I'm in Corel Painter for the sergeants, for the oils, for the acrylics. I like the way the brushes feel, especially the sergeants. The sergeants take a little bit of a learning curve, in my opinion. But the results just look great. And you don't have to work super hard at it. Like, you don't have to go in and change blending modes to, you know, oh, well. Uh, the, with digital art, there's this um, thing of... I, I don't know, being able to do what you're planning immediately with your stylus or, you know, with your mouse or kind of whatever you're using as your input device, be able to just use it and get a result that you're expecting. Or there's another way to do it to where you kind of paint stuff and then later on you add kind of the, the more natural looking stuff later as like a post-process thing. Like you go in and then you smudge your edges to make them look painterly, or you add a canvas texture on top of stuff to make it look more like traditional art. So there's two ways to go about it. Either you can do it live, or you can do it after the fact. And with the Sargent brushes, I feel like I can get good painterly results right then. I don't have to worry about, oh, I'm gonna come back and smudge it out and try to make it look and appear more painterly or whatever. It just works. It doesn't feel like any other brush you're going to use because it does this almost like drag. It drags pixels and then it pushes them. It does this, I, it's almost like a warp brush in a way. So it does take a little bit to get used to, but I will say whenever you're mixing colors, whenever you're in there kind of in the weeds, if you switch to a sergeant brush, I think you're going to be surprised at the type of nuance you can get with it. It's a really cool brush. Like I recommend just those brushes 
for 30 bucks, like those brushes are great. <laughs> you know what I mean? So there's going to be a lot of times that I'm going to be working in another paint program and like maybe import the image into Painter so I can give it a little bit of that Sargent, you know, overpass and then maybe export it back out. Um, so, yeah, the, the, the fluid brushes, I know that's kind of on everybody's mind and they're good. They are good. But what are they? From what I can tell, these fluid brushes are basically brushes that act the same way that you would see in like Clip Studio Paint or Photoshop, where they're a little more uh, digital, kind of wet, smudgy, airbrush sort of stuff. More of what you would think of as quote unquote digital art instead of Corel Painter really focusing on the traditional side and that traditional feel and the way the layers stack and all that stuff, this is kind of embracing more of the digital art stuff that you would see in Krita, that you would see in, you know, uh, Paint, uh, yeah, Paint Storm Studio and things like that. Um, I think it's cool. I think having more options is better. I think the more fully focused and well-rounded that Corel can be in its own program makes the price easier to digest. Does that make sense? Because technically, you can have, you can kind of just buy this, buy Corel Painter, and be done. Like, you don't need another paint program. This can do everything that you would need it to do now. Um... Now, I personally don't work that way. I like to have a variety of different programs because it helps me solve problems in a different way. But rest assured, if you just wanted one paint program and you wanted to learn it inside out, upside down, and reverse and backwards, uh, this is the one to get. You can spend years learning just how Corel Painter works and get some just staggeringly good results, right? Um, I will say the performance is better in this one. Uh, even 2022 was pretty good. 2019, I was not a fan of that. I, I, it crashed a lot. It was really clunky. I just didn't work as well as I wanted it to. But 2022, you know, I guess I gave it a few years. And then 2022, I really enjoyed how snappy it was. And with 2023, it seems like they're continuing that trend. I think they're getting better at understanding computers with multiple uh, thread cores and things like that. Like, you know, processors are different now than they were 10 years ago. So I think using the newer technology and really embracing it has helped a lot because I can do a lot more. I can zoom in, I can zoom out, I can smudge tool, I can uh, change the tools, I can change blending modes. Um, yeah, it just feels like a better experience, a better painting experience, for me, at least. And, yeah, there's a lot to like here. There's a whole lot to like. Now, that could be because I've had more experience with Corel Painter since I've used 2019, 2022, and now 2023. I've, you know, spent some hours in it, and I've really started understanding the way it works. And I will say that it is a net positive. Like, uh, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm completely a convert and this is the be all end all, but this is a fantastic program, especially at $30, to add to your kind of toolbox in your portfolio of tricks, as it were. It, it, it's great. It, it's really good. It's really solid. Um, Let's say you see this video after the Humble Bundle. Um, yeah, you could go ahead and do a full purchase. Uh, I know there's like a $200 a year subscription fee that you can do that, and you always get every version of Corel. But if you want to stay away from the subscription model, which I do not blame you, yeah, um, especially if you have an older version, and then you want to update, and, you know, there's some sales they have that you can update for like a little over 100 bucks. Yeah, I think this is I think this is worth it. I think the fluid brushes do add a little bit of dimension simply because it gives you more options to solve problems. And that's always a good thing. 
and then you start if you start really cutting into the weeds like are the fluid brushes here better than the standard brushes in Krita? You know, because I mean, if that's what the fluid brushes are going for, um, how does it stack up against something like Krita or Photoshop or Clip Studio or what have you? Something a little bit more digital art has been established, has the hard round, soft round, chalk brush, you know, kind of your standard staples. Um, I think it's a great incentive that they added it but it's not going to compete with the flexibility of those other programs because those other programs are built from the ground up for that. While Corel, on the other hand, was built from the ground up for super intricate, you know, how is the texture overlaid? How is the, the, how is the uh, canvas lighting affecting how the paint goes on? Like, it's really kind of a simulator more than, more than just an overall snappy paint program that I'm going to download real quick and you know uh, Corel Painter takes a little more investment I think it takes a little more mental um, acuity <laughs> as far as planning what you want and really digging into the weeds and making it happen um, the other programs are just easier to use uh, Corel Painter is its own thing it is its own nomenclature it's its own uh, you know environment that you really want to learn and, and get better at. Uh, but it is worth it. It's, it's a worthy endeavor. It is, you're going to make some stunning looking stuff. And really, I mean, if you're looking, if you're a hobbyist or you're an amateur and you're looking to really push yourself and push your boundaries and, hey, you know, if I get Corel Painter 2023, can I make like professional grade art? Can I make art prints? Yes. Uh, anything that you have in your mind's eye as far as professional aspirations, Corel Painter can do it without a hitch. Um, it takes more time, and you really got to learn it. But I think once you get into the weeds, and once you really start learning what Corel is good at, and maybe what it's not so strong at, you can really push it and make some just drop dead gorgeous stuff. Now, if you're a baller on a budget, which, you know, we're all artists and the economy's crazy and stuff. So we're all kind of a baller on a budget at a certain point. Um, would I recommend Corel Painter 2023 at full price? Mm, maybe not, just because there are other options available. You know what I mean? Uh, Krita is free to get, you know, free to download. I do say, you know, send them 10 bucks and the Krita Foundation, tell them to keep up the good work, uh, keep it free for everybody. But uh, you know, there's a lot of different options on the market. You know, the market's different than it was 20 years ago. But, to be fair, Corel Painter is different than it was 20 years ago, too. So, it, I think it's keeping up well. I think it's listening to the community, adding different layer modes, um, different uh, kind of, oh, adjustment layer type stuff that they're doing, adding the fluid brushes, making a favorites menu for your brushes. Um, they're doing a lot of good, a lot of good. And I'm very, very excited if they continue this trend. Um, it's going to get even better from here. And that's an exciting place to be because they've already, over the past three years, they have, I mean, done a full 180, in my opinion. They've... Got it to be less clunky. It's better to use. It's more fun to use. Um, yeah, it's just a m much more enjoyable experience. So if you have the budget, if you want to get it, if you're getting it on the Humble Bundle, highly recommended for El Painter 2023. There's still some nuance. There's still a learning curve. But just know that going in. And I think you're going to be very, very pleased. Uh, the more beefy your computer, the better. Um, especially when you start mixing some of those layer modes. But yeah, the fluid brushes are great. I'm I'm glad that they're in there. I'm glad that they respond the way that um, you think they would. You know, if you're coming from another paint program into Corel Painter, they do behave the way you think they would, and that is a huge uh, boon and benefit to these brushes. But yeah, I, I still think the the wet brushes and the thick brushes and you know all that stuff, the stuff that you really want painter for. Um, you know, with stuff like Rebel and Art Rage and Paintstorm Studio out now, 
you know, there's more competition on the market. And I think while those programs are easier to use and easier to get in there and like just start smearing paint around, I think Corel Painter is probably still the gold standard on customization, on being able to get in there. Um, how thick do you want the paint? You know, how much light do you want the impasto to gleam off of the light source? What color is the light source? And I'm not talking about the light source in your painting. I'm talking about the light source on your painting. So stuff like that, you're, you're now thinking three or four levels deeper. And if that's an experience that you want, um, Pro Painter's for you, for sure. And yeah, I, I think that there's really nobody on the market that does it as well as Corel Painter when it comes to that type of stuff. Like, what type of threaded cotton do you want on your, you know, like you're getting in the weeds. And, uh, <laughs> but, but Corel has that on lock and they've always had that on lock. And I don't think anything's going to change that. Um, while other programs might be easier to just load up and start pushing paint around, if you're in it for customization, Corel Painter is the one for you, man. For sure. But yeah, overall, I mean, positive stuff. I'm really liking 2023. I'm going to use it much more, um, dig in more. It's exciting. Um, it, it has that kind of addictive nature of you see an option and you're like, oh, I wonder what this does. And you click it and you kind of see what happens. There's a lot of that. So if you're willing to kind of suck it up and have a learning curve ahead of you, but you have a huge, beautiful, bright light at the end of the tunnel, Corel Painter is definitely worth considering. And like I said, during the Humble Bundle, every year around October, November, they, they come out $30 for that year's version. That's a that's steal of the century. I think you're going to be super pleased with it. I think you're going to have a lot of fun. But let me know what you think. What is your experience like with Corel Painter? Uh, I'd love to hear about it. I'd love to uh, hear what your thoughts are, maybe see some of the work you've made with it. Super exciting stuff. Uh, can't wait to see what they have going on and cooking in 2024. Because something tells me next year, around October or November, we're going to be doing another one of these. Uh, but until then, I'll catch you around. Have fun. Go paint and make cool art. And we'll catch you next time. Peace. <laughs>